Hi everyone, I'm John Height, General Manager for Warcraft, and with me today are my friends Ian Hazakostas, who is the Game Director for World of Warcraft, and Holly Longdale, who leads up the production team for WoW Classic. I really appreciate you tuning in. I know we're really excited to be able to give you updates on what's happening in World of Warcraft. But first, I want to thank our community for all the feedback you've given us this year, and especially our community council. You've helped shape and influence the updates that we've done recently and what you're going to see in the upcoming year. I mean, really, for Shadowlands in particular, the story of the last nine months or so of, of this expansion is all about the community, and it's shaped by what we've been hearing from them and us realizing as a team that we just collectively needed to do a better job of making sure the community felt heard. And so that led us to the changes we made in 915, but also really re-examining some of the assumptions and foundations of World of Warcraft about things like character investment and mains versus alts, or how catch-up should work, or the appropriate role of friction in our systems. And I think 915 represented a step in the direction of letting players have more freedom to play World of Warcraft the way they want to play it. And we really built our Eternity Zen content update from the ground up around those principles. What are some of the things that the community said that, that influenced your decisions for Eternity Zen? Things like the method and pacing of acquisition of the Covenant Legendary item, tons of tuning, and I think every step of the way, um, we were listening to make sure that we were carrying forward those lessons learned in the course of 915 into Eternity's End and beyond. So WoW Classic yeah. was really, came about because of the community. Yeah, they continue to help guide and support us as Classic evolves. World of Warcraft has always been about the world and the players that inhabit it. And we are in a lot of ways curators and caretakers mm -hmm. of that journey and of that experience. And so once this Classic community formed and grew, we had to listen to them. It's this tide of listening to the community and paying attention to what is a good experience for our players now. Um, and where we really saw a sea change in this idea is with our Season of Mastery realm, which is a season of Fresh Start Classic. And initially we were talking about it like it was going to be like a fresh start. Let's try this experiment in a season. It'll be about a year long. And then when the community found out about it, we started seeing this upswell. Yeah, the team just took that idea and ran with it yes. and turned you know, what started out as a small community project mm -hmm. into this Soul of Iron system that became a centerpiece <laughs> of Season of Mastery and a whole new opt-in hardcore mode that we've seen communities built around. Yeah. Lots of, you know, thrilling victory and painful defeat. <laughs> five um, hours. I made it five <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah. And it continues, like Burning Crusade Classic. We wanted to balance the Paladin seals between Horde and Alliance, so we made an addition there. We wouldn't have gotten there without the community's input. So, influence the community, you've got another update and pretty significant controversial change for this. Yeah, cross-faction play uh, coming coming in 925. <laughs> Uh, which is on, on a public test realm now as a big centerpiece. Ian, cross faction. Yep. You're breaking with a 17-year tradition. Yeah, it's something. It was not an easily made decision by any means. You know, and I think this is another one of those areas where really we try to take to heart community feedback and requests, and ask ourselves as a team whether there's a way to accommodate such an earnestly held desire and still feel like we're being true to the to the roots of the game. You know, I think players desire to play with their friends who might prefer a different faction or to play with the faction that they more closely identify with, even though their ray group is elsewhere. It's really important for me. I play a lot of alts, and I love absorbing the story for each race, and having that ability to play with all of my friends across factions is fantastic. At the end of the day, the battle cry is for the Horde. It's not against the Alliance. It's not death to the Alliance. It's about pride in one's faction, and I think there's a way to preserve that and even strengthen that while giving players the ability to make the same choice we've seen the greatest heroes make time and time again. I can't wait to do this. I'm seeing a lot of my friends that I never knew had a max level character in the other faction suddenly come out of the woodwork. And then, you know, with these, this, these cross-faction groups, many of them are going to be diving into something new that we're doing to kind of cap off Shadowlands, a season four. Uh, kind of a remix, a little bit, a bit of a greatest hits, revisiting our, all of our raid zones across the expansion, bringing in some familiar older favorites into the Mythic Plus rotation. And you know we recognize this is kind of a, a closing chapter, a little bit of a send-off 
to Shadowlands. As everyone gets ready for what happens next, what will come next, <laughs> want to give you know a fun new challenge for everyone to sink their teeth into. Really cool stuff for for modern WoW players. I'm super excited about the gear upgrades that you're going to give me and the chance to go back and play some of those those awesome raids. There's a lot to explore. Very exciting. For our next adventure in World of Warcraft, we're going to go back to Azeroth. We're going to a space with high fantasy. I mean, our fans have asked for this for a long time. This has been kind of the foundation of much of the lore of WoW. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's watch the cinematic. Ancestral home to you, the Watchers. Let the land slumber, hidden even from our own eyes. You will feel our return in the waking of the land. Then you must light the beacon of tear hold, lest the path home be lost to us forever.
but her fate is yet uncertain. Together, we shall be Azeroth's protectors once again. Here, the new age of dragons shall begin. Dragons! Dragons! This is so cool. No one saw it coming. <laughs> no one saw it coming. Carefully kept secret. But seriously, I mean, what did we just see there? The awakening of the Dragon Isles, the return of dragons, the dawn of a new age. Right, we've seen Rathian searching for his father's legacy, searching for the Dragon Isles. There's a reason why he hasn't been able to find them until now. The beacon going off, is that summoning the dragons? It is removing the concealment that had hidden the Dragon Isles from the world, but also beckoning the dragons back urgently in a time of need. I assume pretty good variety of locales within the Dragon Isles? It's yes. The Dragon Isles, as kind of standard for WoW expansion, consist of five zones, four standard leveling zones, and a new starter zone that we'll get to in a second. Can you talk a little bit about how the team found ways to thread the dragon aspects throughout the environments? The, the Dragon Isles are a place that is lush and primal, bursting with elemental energy. As Azeroth herself reawakens, those primal forces are expressed throughout the environment, whether it's magma activity, volcanic activity, whether it's the icy wastes of the Azure Span. And each one of those has a connection to a dragon flight that we've seen before and it's gonna be an amazing place for players to arrive at and explore. All right, you know I'm gonna ask. <laughs> yes, okay, so. Can, can, can I be a dragon? Let, yeah, <laughs> let, let, let's start getting into some features here and what dragon flight means for you as well as just a place. Um, so first off, yes, we have an all new playable race, the Drakthir race. Yeah. Uh, this is a <laughs> dragon, a draconic race, but dragons in, in Warcraft have the ability to take on a humanoid form. What classes can they be? They have unique abilities as literally a dragon, that doesn't quite fit any of our existing classes. And so what we're doing is this is not just a new race, but it's also a new class. You know, adding a new race to World of Warcraft and not just an allied race is something that we don't do lightly, but telling this expansion, this story so focused around dragons felt like the perfect time for it. So if you are a Drakthir, you will be the Evoker class. Drakthir can only be Evokers, Evokers can only be Drakthir. And the reason why only a Drakthir could be an Evoker is that an evoker is really combining the ability to call upon the magic of the different aspects with the unique physical gifts that a Drakthir has, the ability to actually take flight and do an Anixia style strafing deep breath over the battlefield, land on the other side, knock everyone back with a wing buffet, and then unleash your magical abilities. Yes, please. <laughs> the evoker has two specializations. They're a hybrid of either ranged DPS or healer, and they wear male armor, we figured, you know, with the new hero classes, classes we've added over the years, we have enough melee, we don't need more of those. And also, probably don't need any more, any more leather wearers. The raid leaders are gonna love you for that. <laughs> exactly. This is definitely a hero class. And so that means that, you know, like the Death Knights before them, or Demon Hunters, they will be starting a level 58. And then they're gonna have a new starter zone. So they're gonna have a slightly different journey into the Dragon Isles, as opposed to the rest of us that are sailing there from other parts of Azeroth. Can you talk a little bit about the customizations? Like, what is going to be able to identify my drag theory character. Basically anything and everything. You know, skin color, hair color, jewelry, tattoos, other adornments. You can make this character the expression of, of your identity in Azeroth. New zone, new class, yep. new race. Well, tell us about some of the, the system updates yeah, or features. So, of course, a new expansion brings with it, you know, new systems, new features. I think in recent expansions, one of the things we've tended to do is really have these deep features that were closely tied to a specific expansion that would then get left behind as we moved on. Mm -hmm. And we've heard loud and clear from players that, you know, it's kind of a bummer to start off every new expansion by leaving a large part of your character behind, by leaving a large part of your progression behind. So this time around, what we're doing is really pouring all of our energy into permanent revamps, overhauls, and improvements to World of Warcraft's core systems. Things like our progression systems, in this case, our talent system, is something that we want to completely revamp. We want to take a look at our UI. We want to take a look at professions. 
So with the talent revamp and the arrival of Classic, did you learn anything about how our talents work? I think seeing a new generation of players play with those talents and work through those talent trees really underscored some of the things that, frankly, we lost mm -hmm. when we shifted to the Mists of Pandaria-style talents and beyond. A big piece of that was some of just the granularity, the feeling of getting a level and spending a point to customize your character to make yourself a bit better in some specific way. But also, you know, the, that sense of hybridity that you could have, that's something that we've largely lost. And so the new talent system avoids directly pitting player power throughput choices directly against those sort of utility hybrid choices because we know that there's always a right outcome there. And we also understand that you know, there's a lot of strength in the flexibility of the modern talent system to let players customize their talents for a particular encounter or for dungeons versus PvP, and we don't want to lose any of that. So John, UI? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got this 30 inch monitor trying to keep track of where I am on the map, all my buffs, and oh, over here, what's going on in chat. It has literally made my eyes go like this. <laughs> so, yep. you're, and you're not alone in that. We've made a lot of incremental changes and additions over the years, but really, this is a revamp, this is an overhaul. And so, we're excited to really modernize the look and feel while staying true to the origins of World of Warcraft. Now, at the same time, we're not looking to take away the sort of power user customization there. Add ons are still there if you want them but we want a much better default out-of-the-box experience for all players, new and old alike. And can I reduce elements, remove elements? If I want to explore the world and, and see the beauty of Azeroth. When it comes to specific elements, as much as possible, we want to let players choose what to show and what to hide so that they can control it themselves. You mentioned professions. I have a critical question about this. Go on. Can I wear a chef's hat? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Our approach to professions in Dragonflight is really all about delivering on fantasy and identity as a crafter. And so if you want to be a serious blacksmith, if you want to be a great leather worker, we want to deliver the ability to invest time and energy into that, become a master crafter, be able to make items that are in demand, interact with the community. One of the big pieces that we want to do to support that is a new work order system to have a bit more convenience than just spamming trade chat all day. But if you are someone, you're not yourself a blacksmith, but you have a bunch of mats and you want them forged into a great sword, you can put that work order up, list your mats, offer a commission, and a skilled blacksmith can come along and make you the weapon of your dreams. I think we left out one thing, though. You can be a drag there, go to Dragon Isles, can I have a dragon? Oh. What's the fantasy of dragons, if not soaring over the lands? And so we're really excited to introduce a feature that we're calling dragon riding. It's dynamic with you know, everything from momentum to dive bombs, the ability to you know, just sort of build that speed up and feel the world rushing past you in a way that should be much more exciting than traditional flight that we've made available in the past, but that's also available for players through a customizable dragon mount right from the start. So this is a skill you learn over time, right? To become an awesome dragon rider? Yes, you'll be able to sort of upgrade aspects of your flight, but you will have this new form of flight from the start. And the dragon companion that you have is, of course, very thoroughly customizable, which is a new, <laughs> a new thing for us for mounts. This is not just a generic dragon that everyone has, but a drake that is yours. You know, what, what do you want its scales to look like, horns, the shape of its head, other attachments, armor pieces, and more. Take your pick. This is so cool. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so the Dragonflight expansion is going to see players leveling to 70, going to the all-new continent of the Dragon Isles, which consists of five zones, four standard leveling zones, and a new starter zone for our Drakthir class, as well as a range of systems revamps, such as a new talent system, an overhaul and update to our UI, and an entirely fresh look at professions with more depth than ever before. Also getting around the Dragon Isles is gonna come in the form of Dragon Riding, which lets you customize and upgrade your own mount so that you can fly in a sense from the start. And of course, as with any new expansion, we have a new set of dungeons, a raid, and much more to come. We also have an alpha that will be starting up in, in, in the future. Check out our website for more information and keep an eye out for those opt-in signups if you want to help us test out Dragonflight and give us even more feedback to make it better. We do have a deep dive that follows this, so please stay around. Classic players, we haven't forgotten about you. You could probably guess where we're gonna go next. One of the all-time favorite expansions for World of Warcraft. Let's watch the cinematic.
my son. The day you were born, the very forests of Lordaeron whispered the name Arthas. have come to an end. You shall be king. It's just incredible, isn't it? Every time I see the cinematic, I get chills. No pun intended, I do, I get chills. As you saw, Wrath of the Lich King classic is coming this year. It brings back so many memories. When you see that cinematic, what do you remember from Wrath of the Lich King? Anytime you want to talk about undead frozen dragons, how can you not go back to <laughs> Sindragosa as the source? That was the first expansion I played with my youngest son. Mm -hmm. So I can remember on that platform, black goo and you know chunks of ice falling off and, and having to repeat that battle with the Lich King. But when we finally downed him, it was such an incredible moment. He jumped up out of his room and I jumped up out of my oh. office. We're like, yeah, <laughs> did it. <laughs> so it's a very lasting tale for me. Mm -hmm. So as you know, with this expansion, you will in pre-patch be able to play the Death Knight. They will start at level 55. You don't have to have a high level character to make a Death Knight. So everyone will be able to make one. We're excited to give players some time before Wrath officially launches to get geared up and ready to jump in to Northrend with everybody else. And there are so many zones and areas to explore in Northrend. And I want us to talk about some of our favorites. So for me, Grizzly Hills has a very special place in my heart. The music was some of the best I've experienced mm -hmm. in World of Warcraft. I still make my way all the way up to Storm Peaks to try and find the time lost Protodrake and have yet to get it. I've got to say Dragonblight. The, the wide open nature of the zone, Wormeress Temple in the center of it, it's an unforgettable expansion as both a developer and a player and kind of making that transition from one to the other. Now let's talk about some changes. So one thing we looked at is Dungeon Finder, and it feels like how we envision classic, Dungeon Finder is not a good fit for our community. That was kind of the first step that may have eroded some of that social fabric. Now, as, as people have gone through the experience of going back to vanilla, mm -hmm. rebuilding those groups, relying on each other, not wanting necessarily a random participant just to show up and then leave. Yep. Yeah, that makes total sense. But today, you can do that in Shadowlands. You'll be able to do that in Dragonflight. It's a self-selected group of people who specifically want that different experience. Yes. Let's make sure that's what we continue to give them. That leads right into arena teams in Burning Crusade Classic. So we listen to the community and we remove that because individual rating is preferable and a better experience for them than arena teams. Also, with Wrath of the Lich King, Barbershop which allows you to customize your character. We're going to be adding a few more options that were not existing when Wrath launched, but also there's another side of this where we are not gonna charge a real money fee. It was a paid character customization fee, right? Yeah. It seems the right thing to do that that just be available in game for gold and we add more options to it, right? It's sort of like spell batching in a sense. There's a lot of technical advancements and it's not about the philosophy of what makes classic classic and what mm -hmm. brings people together. It's just what's the better experience and let's not artificially restrict something that we can provide a better version of just for the sake of nostalgia. And this is, we're happy to say this is one of those cases. So, Wrath. The level cap's being increased to level 80, so we'll be introducing a level 70 boost so that players who want to get in with their friends or just explore Northrend right away will be able to do that. You can apply it to a Death Knight, but you will be able to use it otherwise. And of course, we have Inscription, a whole yep. new profession, so we're really excited about that. Yeah, and as we continue this road to Wrath, we're gonna be looking to getting a lot more feedback on beta, and we'll make changes as we need to such an exciting time to be playing World of Warcraft. We have the return of the Wrath of the Lich King for classic fans and taking us somewhere new with Dragonflight. We're so excited to be able to bring these adventures to you. Don't forget, there's a deep dive on Dragonflight where you're gonna get a lot more information. Thank you so much for spending this time with us and we'll see you in Azeroth. And we'll see you in Northrend. And in the Dragon Isles. <laughs>